I get to use the mic, that's exciting. Uh, my talk is this, who the fuck is Ben? And I... So, in a pretty picture, in a perfect world, this would be what a project looked like. So you'd design the website, you'd have someone code it, and then you'd have someone plug in all the fancy bits and make it work. Um, unfortunately, there tends to be some interruptions, spec changes, new sections, client feedback, new developers join, and this lovely picture in the middle turns to chaos and often ends up with unusable code, complicated code, bloated code, and so it's collaboration at every stage of the project um, with developers, project managers, there's feedback continuously from clients coming in um, and it eventually ends up, there we go, so maintainable and bloated code and I'm sure anyone who's worked in an agency probably has heard the line, I've never worked on that project or I don't understand it or that's not me, any of those wonderful terms to get you out of jail. Um, so hopefully part of the solution to that is BEM. Um, BEM was created, uh, it's a class naming convention, very exciting, and it was um, created by a company in Amsterdam who does some big Russian search engine, I don't care, it's a naming convention, and it stands for Block, Element and Modifier. Um, so, if we go along, so if we think of a web page as this, we have lots of blocks on it. Blocks can range from a news article, it can be an image, a footer, a header, a login, a search, logo, tabs, anything you can think of, it's probably a block. It's a unit on a website. And then you have elements, and elements are part of blocks. So, for example, if you had a login, you'd have an input, two inputs here um, as uh, elements, and you'd have the button as elements. These are meant to be tabs and then you'd have each tab item would be an element. So you've got a block, inside a block is element, um, and there's another example. And then you have modifiers. So modifiers are something where you have a block which is used multiple times over the website, but just some, a small thing changes. So um, there's an example here, you've got two kind of button sets, tabs, however you want to call them, um, but they slightly different style depending where they dropped in. So that would be a modifier of a block, um, a modifier of something. Um, so an example of that in some pretty CSS um, is this. So a person is a block, I am a block. Um, my hand is an element of my block. And then if I were female, that would be a modifier of me. Um, this, I hope this makes sense. So, if you want a female hand, you've got a block, a lady, and a hand. And then if you want to do left hand, you've got a block, a hand, and left hand. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so, as you can see here, there's lots of different variations, and we're separating them by double underscores, or double dashes. The only reason we use the, I mean, really the elements behind them is the block element modifier, so you can use anything to split it. But the reason you use double underscores and double dashes, while that possibly looks like it's breaking the rules, um, it's fine, but the reason it's split is so you could have dashes and underscores within the block name. Um, so for example, you could have news dash article as a block name then you could double underscore it for a, um, an element. And you can also, you can notice that it doesn't have to be block, element, and modify. It doesn't have to be in that order. It just has to be wherever it exists. So a female person that's related, it's a modifier of person, so it lives together. That doesn't live at the end. Because it's a modifier of person, not a modifier of hand. 
I hope that kind of makes sense. Um, so an example, I hope you can see this in practice, would be when we went back a few slides, we had the header and the footer had different tab buttons in. So this would be a, a real life example where you have the block is menu, so you can see both have menu. An element is menu item, and then you've got two modifiers there. So you've got an active class, which is dash dash active on the menu item. And you also have a um, modifier to indicate the top version and the bottom version. Um, got a couple of the examples here. These are news items, so this is probably a common news listing. So you, have kind of, you can see I'm using a single dash there for news dash item. Then within it, I've got elements, so it'd be a title or an excerpt. And then often you might have a sticky post, so that would be a modifier. Um, one last example. This is a portfolio. So you've got like portfolio items as you go down. And then you've got variations of that, so it could include an image, a video, a quote, whatever you like. And then there's also, you can have multiple uh, modifiers, so they're just highlighting and simply putting a different background on it. So a uh, modifier has one function, and the idea is you create a set of reusable code, so then you could um, apply that wherever you want. The other benefit of the method, if we go back, is you can see what is related to what. So nor, um, if you're doing that in normal uh, class name, and you might just call that excerpt and that title. But by doing that, you have no idea where that thing lives in CSS. So if I pull title out and just dump it on the page by itself, is it going to look the same? Probably not. But from the HTML, you don't know that. So the idea is anybody can look at the HTML and then gauge straight away that this, these two things belong to that, and they live as a unit together. So if you wanted to move it away, you'd have to take the other elements with it. Um, so all in all, it creates maintainable code because you have this nice selection of elements, blocks, and modifiers that you can use. And just by looking at the HTML, anybody can come in and hopefully understand a little bit of what's happening. So if they want to create a page using elements, they could have a look at the code and they could see the source code of the page and they could say, oh, if I want that, I'll just grab that and put it onto here. Um, it's transferable between projects, especially if you're using SAS. I don't know how many people use that, or any CSS preprocessor. So you can create these kind of elements where you just grab them and you can just drag them across new projects. So common elements like menus, news items, you'd want to probably pull them up and take them to put them somewhere else. Um, works perfectly with modular web design, um, which is what a lot we're doing at work at the moment with some of our new projects. So you have lots of elements rather than paint, and then you have some layouts, and then you kind of put them together like Lego bricks, and you have a nice looking page, instead of designing just page by page by page, which what ends up happening is you code one page, then you completely code another page, and another page, and then you this humongous CSS style sheet. Um, and obviously it reduces code by creating reusable elements. And that's me. And that's my Twitter. Please follow me. <laughs>